Netflix was first founded in California in 1997 by Mark Randolph and Reed Hastings. When it first opened, Netflix was purely a website-based DVD movie rental service. It allowed people to rent DVDs online using a pay-per-rental model. Users would put in their orders and receive a DVD in the mail. When they were finished with them, they simply sent them right back. With this model, users could keep the DVDs for as long as they want, but could only rent a new movie after returning their, their one that they existingly had. They originally thought of this idea because they were once fined a $40 late fee from Blockbuster and had enough of it. After significant growth, Netflix switched to a subscriber-based model in 1999 that allowed unlimited rentals per month with a set fixed price. After more growth, it created its streaming service in 2007, which is the service we have today, that provides us with a wide range of TV series, documentaries, and feature films across a wide variety of genres and languages that we can watch on our personal technological devices. Today, it has over 151 million paid subscribers in over 190 countries around the world. According to its company website, its core philosophy, its core philosophy is people over process. This approach allows for a more flexible, fun, stimulating, creative, collaborative, and successful organization. They also state that like all great companies, they strive to hire the best and they value integrity, excellence, respect, and inclusion. Doing this has made them the world's largest leading entertainment platform. Netflix has seen success in the past by putting into practice the necessary steps to complete their vision as well as their mission statement. These are two important terms a company must have because they help explain what a company plans to accomplish as well as how they are going to do it. The vision statement should describe the company's purpose and their long-term plan. It should give its employees a source of inspiration and a positive outlook on where the company sees themselves in the future and how they will be perceived. The mission statement should be communicated to the employees and leaders of the company and should reflect the direction of the company and where it's headed. Netflix's vision to become the best global entertainment distribution service is a good vision statement. It is clear and provides Netflix's positive outlook to become the best in their market worldwide. Their mission, their mission statement is one that has been changed as the market and competition has also changed. This is okay because a company's direction can be changed in order to try and acquire and, and maintain a competitive advantage. I believe Netflix's mission and their mission statement is good because it provides direction of where Netflix must get better at in order to compete in this very competitive market of streaming. For example, they say that they are continuously improving the customer experience with a focus on expanding their streaming content and enhancing the user interface while also extending their streaming services to even more internet connected devices. Their mission is to do all of this while staying within the parameters of their net income and profit targets. It is clear where they want to expand their business and also what they want to do to improve their service. As the market continues to get more and more competitive, Netflix must continue to adjust their mission statements. If they wish to do anything different, they may have in mind. As far as the external environment, pestle analysis can break down factors into political, economic, social, technological, environmental, and legal areas. While all definitely affect Netflix, a couple can be considered more important, two of those being social and technological which actually go hand in hand. Culturally, people are leaving cable behind and choosing streaming, especially on their mobile devices. Because of that, companies are motivated to produce better tech. For example, 5G, it allows for better streaming on more devices. Both the social switch and the tech advancements affect Netflix's success. On the other hand are Porter's Five Forces. Again, all are applicable, but some are more influential at any given moment. Right now, the threat of entrance is a big one, as there are more and more competitors entering the scene <clears throat> with their given streaming service. Because of that, the degree of rivalry has also risen, because as there are more competitors, there's more competition, and Netflix has more rivals to compete with. The two of those have also caused the bargaining power of buyers to move from a moderate weight to a higher force because now there are more options for, bar for buyers to put their money into. <clears throat> because of these factors, Netflix lives in a industry that seems attractive from the outside, but with the big names that are already in there, the powerhouses such as Netflix, it is not as attractive as it looks just because of the easy entrance.
Right now, competition is on the rise for Netflix, and two specific ones are Amazon Prime Video and Disney+. Plus. These two were chosen because they cover the range from a standing competitor to the newest competition and are separate entities that, while offer similar streaming services to Netflix, also have traits specific to their own streaming capabilities. For example, Amazon Prime is, Video is included with a Prime subscription, but since they offer new and old movies, you can pay to see the newer ones sooner than you would see them pop up on places such as Netflix. Amazon also has the resources to make their own originals. Their strategy is encompassed in their goal, which is to deliver the broadest and best selection, which further enhances their chances of their future goal of making Prime Video more of a source of revenue and keeping their streaming service competitive. Disney, on the other hand, provides a wide range of titles through their big names, such as Marvel. Leveraging those names seems to be their strategy. They've also had a bundle made with ESPN Plus and Hulu that creates even more variety, which helps them in their goal to move from an old media titan into the digital age competitor that they aim to be. Based on the environment Netflix competes in, their biggest threats are the competitive pressure and the government regulations they face. Many new streaming services have started popping up, meaning Netflix is losing some of their content while also still having to compete with those same sort of services that are taking their content back. Government regulations also keep Netflix from easily being able to expand outside of the states, so the chances of finding new markets to compete in are slim. However, to counteract those threats, Netflix can update their library with originals or form contracts with other content providers that have yet to do so. They can form alliances as well, much like the one Disney has with Verizon or Hulu, in order to stay on top. Keeping the threats at bay by capitalizing on these opportunities can help Netflix stay relevant in an industry becoming more and more competitive. Netflix has maintained a competitive advantage over its competitors due to them being a pioneer in the field of online streaming. They innovated way ahead of the technological age and created streaming in 1999. They create an algorithm that allows for an individualized user experience, which tailors shows and movies to each user. They offer a low-cost subscription, with the most basic being $9 per month, and it allows you to watch an unlimited amount of content. The birth of binge-watching began, where you can watch from any screen with any interface, such as iOS, Android, or Windows. They also have become a household name across nations with international streaming. They also base content uh, where you are geographically and tailor it to the culture. Their core competencies have allowed them to maintain a competitive advantage, but with market saturation increasing, this may not last long. Netflix has a huge variety of strengths that are derived from their core competencies. They offer such a huge variety of content, and a lot of them are now original Netflix productions. Through research, they are able to adapt their deliverables and develop new shows based on what customers are actually interested in. They also have had in the past licensing to films and shows for long periods of times. They also do not have advertisements on their sites, which means that you do not get pop-up ads and you do not have to stop watching your film or TV show and wait for the ad to finish. Another area where they succeed is in their headquarters, um, a tangible asset, which is located in California. The building is innovated in regards to what it offers, two buildings that create interconnectedness with warm coloring, soft textures, open environments that all create collaboration. These buildings allow for their employees to produce the best products and original ideas for Netflix, their intellectual property, which is an intangible asset. They also have huge databases and server hubs that are tangible that they have to make sure no hacking occurs, no data is breached, and they accommodate their 158 million subscribers at any one time. Some weaknesses that Netflix is facing or will be facing in the future is a lack of innovation. They are not pioneering new technology, or not that we know of. They did in 1999 when they developed streaming and they beat a lot of other companies and competitors in this area. They did have strategic agility where they adapted and changed with the market and the shifting technology. But as other competitors began to imitate what Netflix was doing by creating their own original content, such as Hulu and now Disney Plus have made their own platforms. They have retracted a lot of licensing, making similar cloud-based computing systems that have allowed competitors to also host a mass amount of customers. This has shifted the market share and Netflix, if they do not create something that is innovative or differentiated, they risk a steady decline in share. Even with a projected growth on subscribers, this is based on the amount of internet users just increasing globally. 
Netflix needs to make a drastic change for the future in order to keep a competitive advantage. Netflix's yearly earning in 2018 was around $16 billion. This was partly due to Netflix's Blue Ocean strategy. A Blue Ocean strategy utilizes differentiation and cost leadership to create a new market space and a competitive advantage. For example, Netflix used a differentiation strategy for original content, developing original content, and 24-hour streaming services, and no ads. Netflix used cost leadership strategies by lowering costs on media streaming services, using a lower cost to acquire more customers, hiring and retaining employees, and lowering contract costs by producing original content. Both strategies are valuable for customers because a differentiation strategy gives value to customers, but a cost leadership strategy gives consumers the accessibility that they can afford Netflix's content. Netflix just has under 149 million subscribers. This is partly due to Netflix's market segmentation. They use demographics and geographics. For example, they use demographics to gather data on adults and children, males and females. They use this data to find out the needs and wants of consumers. They use geographics to acquire new customers from different countries. Netflix's expansion gives Netflix a new segment to target. Netflix uses a broad scope in its competition. Netflix also uses forward and backwards integration. Netflix's corporate strategy is to provide media streaming services globally. Netflix's original content is a forward integration and is stages three and four in the value chain. Cost cuts in licensing and backwards integration is stages one and two in the value chain. Netflix's market value is around $231 billion. This is partly due to Netflix's corporate strategy and business strategy and how well they fit together. For example, Netflix's corporate strategy uses media streaming services to provide convenient content to a global market, while their business strategy competes in the streaming media market by using a blue ocean strategy. Consumers value a blue ocean strategy and it gives them an advantage in the market because people want Netflix's content. Their corporate strategy fits well together with their business strategy because Netflix wants to grow and Netflix is growing in new markets around the world. Netflix has been able to dominate the streaming market so far because they essentially created the market itself. However, other companies such as NBC, Amazon, Hulu, and Disney have broken into the market. This may be one of the few times where a market is moving from a monopoly into a monopolistic competition, although barriers to entry are still very high. The difference with these other companies is that they, with the exception of Amazon, actually own studios and produce content which they will own the rights to. Netflix has been buying the rights to their content, even their so-called original content. Disney has also partnered with Verizon in order to provide their new streaming service, Disney Plus, to Verizon customers with an unlimited data plan. Taking these steps, as well as others, will be critical if Netflix wishes to stick around. The first course of action that we would recommend is for Netflix to use their abundance of capital to purchase their own production studios. Currently, Netflix is buying up rights to content and then slapping their logo on it. The problem with this is that every other streaming service can play this game better, especially the ones with deep pockets like Disney and NBC. Netflix's most popular content were the shows Friends and The Office, both owned by NBC. NBC had been happy to take a large check from Netflix for the streaming rights until now, but with the launch of their own streaming service, they are taking them back. Netflix needs to vertically integrate their supply chain of content so they can increase their buyer power. Producing their own content will also allow them to make more money later on by syndicating their content to cable and satellite TV channels. The second course of action to undertake would be to begin partnering with internet service providers. Disney has done this with Verizon, but that leaves Sprint and AT&T to partner with. 5G networks are going to allow for broadband streaming speeds through the wireless and mobile networks. Although 5G networks are still a good time from being nationwide, Partnering with a wireless provider now can make sure that there will be a good stream of subscribers for years to come. 
Yes, the first year may be free, but combined with making original content could create enough value for customers to renew their subscriptions. There is minimal risk involved in a partnership with one of the established wireless providers. The final course of action we recommend would be to branch out into video games. This would work very similarly to how Netflix originally rented movies. It could be possible to offer subscription packages that allow one or two or however many games they would like to pay for to be downloaded to either the personal computer or gaming console of choice. If the customer wanted to play another game beyond what they have paid for, they would either have to upgrade their subscription or return one of the games that currently exists in their library. There would be very little competition in a game rental market. Steam has a similar model in that you can purchase PC games, and as long as you maintain the free Steam account, you can continue to access them from any PC. However, this is still based on paying full price for games, games that gamers may or may not beat in a very short period of time, something that gets frustrating if you have just paid out $60 for the latest game.